And then Chris Rock on the stage, he makes this dumb joke about my wife having bald hair. So you know what I do? I give him a little bit of my virtue. I uh oh, Richard! <laughs> go up to the stage and I the crap oh, wow. Out of him. wow! Come back and you know how I how I know that's virtuous? My wife gives me high five. She says, "Honey, good job." <laughs> and and so I say, "Thank you." Who cares about what Aristotelian definition of virtue is? When <laughs> my wife says I did good job. Oh God! So Aristotle would not say that is a virtue. How are you, baby? Great. Okay, Demo, can we? Should we start? Yeah. yeah. So, didn't we hear the story that I told you about Plato and Socrates? You have a monster in the belly? Uh, not in my belly, in uh, my mind. Sure. Okay. And of course, it was related to Plato and Socrates. We are, so, we are ready. This story is about Aristotle. And be ready, because I'm going to ask you guys a lot of questions this time. <laughs> you look a bit scared, Ma. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely scared. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. They're going to be easy <laughs> questions. A short summary of Aristotle's life. Sure. So, Aristotle was born in 384 BCE in the city of Stadua, Greece. It's not really a city anymore. It's a really small town. But anyway... He was born there in 384 BCE. When he was 17, he started to, um, to move to Athens, and he studied at Plato's Academy until 347 BCE when Plato had a mild case of death. After that, he, mm -hmm. when he was 37 in 347 BCE, he moved to the island of Athens off the coast of Western Anatolia. Then, over there, the king was actually very friendly to him. And the king was also a very amiable to philosophy. And he was a friend of Aristotle. Aristotle met his first wife there, Pythias. After that, he moved back into Greece. And he was called by the king of Macedon, who was like, hey, can you tutor my son? And uh, Aristotle agreed. So when this, so guess what the name? Ale of? Ale Alexander. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And guess who he would later become? Not not you, Dad. Alexander the Good. The Good. <laughs> the Good or the Great? Oh yeah. All right. Well, he wasn't really great in what he did to the people he conquered, but so um so that. And so he tutored uh, Alexander from what looks to be the ages of 13 to 15. Though we don't actually have much concrete evidence for how long he taught Alexander. Because we don't know much about his life between 341 BCE to 335 BCE. But anyway, after that, he moved back into Athens. But he was scared of being executed because... Uh, there was an anti-Macedon sentiment all over Greece. And considering his connections to the kingdom of Macedon, he did not want to be in Athens. In fact, some people criticized Aristotle for not being as brave as Socrates and not standing up to execution. However, Aristotle said, I do not want the city of Athens to commit a sin against philosophy for a second time. Presumably the first time was executed Socrates, but after that, finally, he died in 384 BCE, but not before writing two extensive books, one named The Republic and another named mm -hmm. Ethics. Now, the topics of the book Ethics are more related to today, but we're not going to exactly talk about ethics. Instead, we are going to talk about the values of virtue. In fact, you know how I talked about how Aristotle tutored Alexander the Great earlier? Mm. Well, he, he was said to have tutored Alexander the Great on the subject of virtue. Now, if you look it up, virtue is sort of like a synonym to good. But can you really tell me what virtue means? First of all,
well. What is your perspective on verse Rishad? Uh, do you want to hear a story that I have that shows my virtue? Oh, why, why are you smiling? So I was at the Oscars the other night. Oh God. Okay. So I was sitting with my wife, Jara Smith. Oh no. Uh, and uh, the host was uh, Chris Rock. Okay, so I was relaxing. And um, my wife, as you know, she has alopecia. So that means she, she loses her hair due to the disease. So um, I'm relaxing during the Oscars. Uh, I feel pretty good because I got nominated for the Best Actor Award. Uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And then Chris Rock, on the stage, he makes this dumb joke about my wife having bald hair. Oh. So you know what I do? I give him a little bit of my virtue. I go up to the stage, and I smack the crap out of him. <laughs> oh, God. And he's gone. He flies across the stage. So, and I, and I come back, and you know how I, how I know that's virtuous? How? My wife gives me high five. She says, honey, good job. <laughs> and, and so I said, thank you. Who cares about what Aristotelian definition of virtue is when <laughs> my wife says I did good job? Oh, God. So Aristotle would not say that is a virtue. You probably should have said to, uh, you probably should have said to no to him, you know, for demanding him to apologize or something, rather than slapping him so that everybody would see. In fact, your actions have got it all over the news now. How wonderful. All right, so what is your perspective on what virtue is? I can give you an example. You know, I'm a teacher. And, yeah, of course uh, you are. And the other day I was proctoring and I caught one of my students cheating. Oh, no. And you know, I don't allow a student do illegal thing. Oh, I, wait, I, illegal? Yeah, because cheating is illegal, of course. So I got so frustrated out of my frustration. I embarrassed my student and I I, I did not allow him to continue the test. And you know, and- uh, You humiliated and, him in front of the whole class? Well, I wanted to be virtuous. I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to be good man. Well, I understand your cause here, but two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, the student should not have cheated, and you shouldn't have embarrassed and humiliated him in front of the entire class. It stagnated growth in the education system, and he just well, morally feels damned. And that is, uh, that is not very virtuous. I can understand your cause behind it. In fact, there is a, on the very first line of the book that I talked about earlier, Ethics, and the summary is that it says every single action has some sort of reasonable cause behind it, some good behind it. And I can see what you were thinking. However, it is a bit of an overreaction to do that. So I suggest you could have made some sort of alternative. So like for example, we, and an alternative, you could have chose maybe hmm, to invalidate the test score, send an in, uh, send a note home, or maybe tell them to make the test up again, or maybe send them to the principal, though the principal would have to do a virtue too in order for that to actually work well. So that, uh, that's in my advice for it. I'll consider these alternatives. All right. And finally... <laughs> Some people became so jealous at him and they started harassing him. So, you know, every action has a reaction. So, I reacted to them and I hate them. Oh, hmm. I wonder who that nine-year-old child could be. Anyway, I see your problem. But, I mean, as I said to my father, how two wrongs don't make a right. So, mm -hmm. if you have... If you hate on them, I mean, I myself wrote a book named The Love. So, we should be loving. And so, p people should love the, uh, their enemies. People should try and mediate with those who hate them. 
Because that's the only way to make a better world with peace instead of. <laughs> you think you can laugh back to us and the only to uh, leave? I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> I told you all about some alternative you could book. But wait, wait, wait. First, can I give my own perspective on virtue? Yes. Okay. So say you know, you're driving on the road and suddenly on the sidewalk you see an old lady being taken hostage. I'm gonna save old lady from the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let, let's look at this scenario. Do you have a one hundred percent sure? Are you one hundred percent sure that the terrorists will just collapse and die if you slap them? So you don't want me to become hero? Well, but what if you do nothing? Why not? If you do nothing, you become that's coward. Not... You become coward if you do nothing. That if is you, not a virtue. If you, I if you do... slap the terrorist, then you become hero. Being mm. being a reckless hero is not a virtue, but being a coward is not a virtue either. So, so what what, is, what should I do? Uh, it's like a middle ground for uh, really. Mm. So if you are one hundred percent sure that you can take down the terrorist, you have like a weapon or something. Then you uh, the, the best virtue to do would be to try and save the old lady. But if you think there's a major chance that you can become a victim as well, and that you are endangering yourself, then uh, the best scenario, the best virtue would not be to just drive away or something. It would be to call the police. So okay. doing nothing is not uh, a virtue. Doing everything and risking your own life is not a virtue either. I a know. virtue is doing as much as you can without risking yourself. Mm, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Pizza.